I'm Martin Maxwell. For those of you who have heard from me and know about me, for those of you who don't know about me, for 53 years, starting back in 1959, I began talking about secret societies and paternal orders and occult world of mysticism and religion and government, all the conspiracies going on in government and banking and all of the chicanery going on in religion, the connections between religion and banking, and the whole entire Western civilization system, what it was based on, lies, deception, corruption. So I've been doing this, talking publicly for the last 53 years about this horrible mess that the world was in and was going to get worse. I was invited to go to movie studios at night and uh, recording studios and just do slide presentations with a slide projector on the sound stages of Hollywood talking about the Illuminati and secret societies and the occult world and, and the Knights Templars and the secret societies of religion and how they impact government today. And it's finally, finally caught on. Finally. It has finally caught on. I did a video many years ago called Matrix of Power. I did something called Matrix. I just feel that I've done the best I could to wake my fellow man up. And unfortunately for me and my people who are listening to me, I know, and it is very depressing to me, that I know I'm not going to be able to download 53 years of knowledge that I have I've accumulated. So much I will never be able to tell anyone. And I do feel that that is a shame. Because I've been in the company of extraordinary people all my life. I put myself there purposely. So I've been in the company of a lot of people who are masters at what they do. Masters of research and knowledge and understanding. Your body is a corporation. That's why when you die, you're a corpse because you are a corporation. You are a company. And as such, you may be good company, you may be bad company, but you're a company by law. It's called International Maritime Admiralty Law. The law of money, corporations, the law of the sea. You are a company, a corporation. And therefore, anything you do is business. That may not be my business, that may be your business, but it's a business by law. Therefore, anything you do, which is your business, anything you do must have a license because it's called a business license. So if you're going to get married, that means one corporation is going to do business with another corporation. So you have to have a marriage license. Anything you do, you need to get a permit or a license. And in America, you have something called the Statue of Liberty. It is not the Statue of Freedom. It's the Statue of Liberty. Liberty is what a sailor gets when he gets off a ship in the Navy. When you pull into port and you ask the captain if you can go uh, on land, if he gives you the permission, and he may not, but if you get permission to go out, you have liberty. Sailors call it, we got liberty, not freedom. In America, you have no freedom. You have liberty. Liberty means you ask permission. You get a permit. You have a license. A license is simply an agreement and a permit. A license is a permit to do something which without that license would be unlawful. So therefore you can't get married because you're a business. And she's a business. And what the two of you do is none of my business. But the point you need to understand is that you are a corporation. Your body is being bought and sold on the New York Stock Exchange every day and you have no idea in the world how the world really works. So people talk about having to go to court, they talk about uh, how the government does this and the government did that, and people get scared to death because they got to go to court, which you should be scared of the court. But why do people go to court? Because you play basketball on a court. You play tennis on a court. Wake up. 
I've been talking about this stuff for 53 years, but nobody seems to listen to it very much anymore. The reason why you go to court is a game. It's like tennis. And how do you play tennis? You play, you play with a racket. So you, when you go into a basketball game to play on the court, the whole idea is you have two teams. One team is a team of lawyers and another team of lawyers. And the whole idea in a court, because it's maritime admiralty, international banking law, the whole idea is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. So therefore that one team picks up the ball and they throw it in the over here to you. Now your team picks it up and throws the ball back over their court. And then they pick the ball back and throw it back into your court. And you have a judge who's the referee. You always have a referee, even at a baseball game. You've got the you've got the uh, the referee who makes the decision as to what really happened. I don't care what happened. He decides what happened. Whatever he says happened, that's what happened. Then the next thing you need to understand is that there's a gate, a fence, and a gate in the courtroom, and people sit out here, and the judge sits inside. Why is there a fence and a gate? Because the gate represents a water gate like in the Panama Canal. When the gate opens, the water comes in and raises the ship up. So therefore, when you are called and you put your hand on the gate, you are opening up the flood gate under maritime admiralty law. But happily, Americans have no idea about any of this. But once you understand how this really works, and you begin to see how your body is over 70% water, and you are a maritime admiralty water product. And the way this thing is being played is very, very interesting. The words and the terms and the symbols and your body as a biological battery. We are a biological electrical unit. Therefore, if you are walk into the court and they call your name and you open up the water gate, you are now in hot water and someone's going to have to bail you out. Once you understand that the bank and money runs the world, so the judge rules from a bench. Look up the word bench. It will tell you the word bench is a bank in Latin. Therefore, the judge rules for the bench or the bank. And the judge sits higher up. When you walk in, you'll see the judge sits up here. He's looking down on you, but you're looking up to the bank. The bench. Look it up in the dictionary. When a ship pulls into a harbor, it's got like eight hundred, let's say eight million dollars worth of Toyotas on the damn ship. It pulls into a harbor. It's got eight hundred million dollars worth of business on that ship, and it comes in on water. So we say when the ship comes in, it parts at the dock. The ship comes in on water. $800 million worth of banking just came in on ship. This is why I said banking is maritime admiralty, the law of the sea. So therefore, if you're going to do any business, you need to be part of this corporation. In the world corporation, you are a citizen on board ship. So you have a citizenship, sportsmanship scholarship, you know, dealerships, courtship. And anytime you order something from a big company, they're going to ship it to you. Where a ship sits, when you go to the harbor, where a ship sits is called berth. B-E-R-T-H. A ship is sitting in her berth. Therefore, any items that come off of that ship, she, all ships are she, always. Rocket ship, sailing ship, doesn't matter what kind of ship. If it's a ship, it's she. Under international law, all ships are, are female. Why? Because she delivers the product. The man manufactures, but the woman delivers the product. So when you have been manufactured, and she, your mother, delivers the product, you are a product of two corporations. Maritime Admiralty Law. You or your mother was a corporation, your father's a corporation. Therefore, you are the you are the joint new product of a, of two corporations. Ford Motor Company getting together with, with Suzuki. That's fine. As long as you get 
a license because it's business. And anything that those two companies produce, the one who gave you the license is the boss. Because before that, you couldn't do it at all. But if the corporation gives you the permission to create a new product, fine. But the product belongs to them, not you. What if I told you the government has your baby's DNA? And in some states, that DNA is stored even without your consent. So once you understand that all ships are female, she sits in her berth, and any item taken off of that ship has to have its own certificate of manifest. It's called a certificate of manifest. And each car has to be represented. Does it have four doors, two doors, air conditioning? What color is it? How heavy is it? What, you know, this and this and that. And all the paperwork has to be correct for each item. So when you're born, it's called a birth certificate. How much did you weigh? What race is it? Did you have two eyes? Was it one arm? You know, what, what color was he, etc. Because these are all vital signs for a product. You are a human resource. You're going to be bought and sold by the international banks in New York and London. Your body is a security on the New York Stock Exchange. According to the uh, British and American, it's called, there's a book you can get from the American Printing Office or the U.S. Government Printing Office. It's called The Styles book. Styles magazine or Styles book. U.S. Printing Office Styles Manual. And in the Styles Manual, published by the United States Government Printing Office, it tells you what the words mean correctly. When you go to court, and you're in a federal court, you're in an international uh, court of any kind, here are the words to use. Because the words you would use on the street don't work in a court. You better know what you're talking about when you're before a judge. You better use the correct term, because if you use a wrong term, thinking you that they will understand, no, now you're going to jail, because you said the wrong word. So, a group of people got together back in 1871, before your grandma was born, 1871, and they formed a corporation after the Civil War. In the Civil War, they called their company United States Corporation. It was a municipal corporation, and it was stipulated anybody who works for the corporation is a member of the corporation. And so today, if you are a U.S. citizen, when you walk in a bank or any place before some authority, and they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen? And you say yes. What you think they're asking you is, are you lawfully in America to do business? Are you lawfully here? Are you an alien, right? And you say, no, I, no, I'm lawfully to be here, I'm okay. So then they will say, well, are you a U.S. citizen? And you say, yes. What you think you're saying is that you're saying, yes, I am lawfully in America. That's not any good attorney will tell you. I'm going to ask you something under oath. Think about what I'm asking you. Because if you answer wrong, you're going to jail. Now my question is, are you, of your own volition, out of your own mouth, testifying in this court, that you are a U.S. citizen? And you say, well, I'm lawfully in America, yeah, no, I, I don't have any problems here. Sure, I'm a U.S. citizen. That's what I wanted to know. Now you're going to jail. Now you go to prison. Because you're not an American. You don't have American freedom. You don't have the Bill of Rights. You're a U.S. citizen. U.S. is a privately owned corporation. That's a maritime admiralty corporation owned by a handful of men that you don't know anything about. And therefore, when you say that you're a U.S. citizen, that means I am an employee of a foreign corporation under maritime law, and therefore my boss is in Washington, D.C., and I work for him. Oh, well now, if you work for him, then you are a U.S. citizen. And according to his policies, not the law of the land, but his policy, his policy is you can't do this, this and that, it's his policy, and you just broke his policy. So that's why we have police to back up the policy that the politicians, who are the masters of the corporation, so the masters of the corporation make the policy and police back it up.